James Geoffrey Griffin, the child abuse scandal that shamed Tasmania. All of the people they knew me as a child, they all tell me that I was a joyful, energetic, happy-go-lucky child. But I don't remember my child self. I don't know who she was when she was happy before she was traumatized. From age 11, Tiffany Sketch was groomed and raped by a man 47 years her senior in Tasmania, Australia. He was a nurse and a well-liked community volunteer, a paternal figure, she said, who felt a hole left by her father's death year earlier. I saw him as a hero. He made it seem like I was the only person on earth, she told an inquiry. My sketch wasn't the only child James Geoffrey Griffin has groomed and had way over the four decades and brandly exploited and abused many girls. One was the child of a colleague and friend, another was a relative. He bragged online about sedating and raping several wives were his patients. Another girl had a disability and was non verbal. Her mother made allegations on her behalf. Exactly how many people Griffin abused is unknown. Authorities say they know some haven't come forward. How was this allowed to happen? The first allegations against Griffin date back to the late 1980s when he was in his 30s. It would take 30 years for him to be arrested. In that time, he gained access to children primarily through his role as a nurse on the pediatric ward at the Lonsenton General Hospital and as a massage therapist for a junior sporting team. For years, parents, colleagues, and even strangers tried to alert authorities to the risk Griffin posed, but only in 2019, when Mr. Skage disclosed her abuse, did police investigate properly. By October that year, Griffin, then 69, had been charged with abusing four children. He died by suicide a week later. A Tasmanian inquiry is now investigating how a litany of complaints and red flags were overlooked during public hearings, which included this month. It heard Griffin received his first written warning about problematic behavior in 2004. The behavior only escalated and complaints began playing up. Among them were reports he had been cuddling our pre teenage girl at the hospital was giving his phone number to patients and had given an 11 year old a wet kiss on the forehead he was counseled and warned but ultimately maintained his access to vulnerable children most extraordinarily the hospital overlooked a disclosure by one of their over staff men on a staff member that she had been repeatedly abused by griffin from age seven in 2011, social worker Kelly Parent told her boss and HR representatives what had happened to her. It followed a sleepless night on the pediatric ward with one of her own children. She had been too scared to leave the child alone. I just thought how incredibly unfair and unfair it was that I could protect my child, but no one else in this ward knew that information. She told Tasmania's Commission of Inquiry into Institutional Responses to Child ex Sexual Abuse. Other staff spoke up to one senior nurse told the inquiry she had taken it up upon herself to allocate young female patients to one uh, to other nurses wherever possible after her concern about Griffin fell on deaf ears. Another colleague, well, Gordon Formally, reported Griffin but his complaint was deemed unsubstantiated without even speaking to the girls involved. Griffin's behavior was constantly excused by Gordon. Mr. Gordon said it would be Miss Jim as Jim. That's just who he is. Only when police reported finding Griffin in procession of child abuse images that appeared to be untaken inside the hospital was he suspended from work. The public hospital had a culture of fear and cover-up, senior staff told the inquiry. 
Some revealed that they had no training in identifying grooming behavior and weren't aware of mandatory reporting obligation or how to escalate their complaints. The head of Tasmania's health department, which oversees the hospital, recently made an emotional apology, saying she was personally horrified by the evidence and the lack of empathy and humanity shown to survivors. While my words alone with will not heal the heart of all those that have suffered, no, nor will a word alone comfort those who will never know if they or their children were victims. I will do my very best to lead the department to right the wrongs to the past, Catherine Morgan Wick said.